All right, Friday afternoon, and we are back at the uh, Rusty Beauty's shop, and we're starting to work back on the uh, 1962 Triumph TR4, and we'll call this part three of the uh, chassis restoration. So on the table in front of me, I've got the uh, brake back plates. So what we want to do is we want to strip these down uh, and get them cleaned up and painted. Uh, I did actually buy new wheel cylinders for this car, but it actually looks like these wheel cylinders are quite new. You can see that they're still quite uh, bright and shiny, the uh, cadmium is still showing. So the adjusters, I usually try to keep the, uh, the stock adjusters. I try not to do aftermarket because the stock adjusters are of better quality. I've seen quite a few where the studs actually snap off the back. So we'll try to keep these if possible. We'll just clean them up and re-grease them. So anyway, that's what we're up to. So we'll clean these back plates up or strip them and clean them up and get them into paint. And then we'll move on to the other components of the rear axle we stripped off yesterday and get those into paint so we can start the reassembly process sooner than later. See you in a bit. All right, we're just playing with the uh, brake adjusters and uh, I've never seen one more seized than, I can't remember what side this is, but it's, it was pretty seized up. There was no way it was adjusting anything. And this one was pretty much the same, although they got this one unstuck a little easier than this one. So we're going to do uh, the same thing with this one. We'll make sure that it has good movement, but this one's working better now. So we'll do the same with the other one. All right, we're looking for uh, inside jobs to do uh, before it gets a little cooler out. So we've dragged the axle in from the paint booth and uh, Lynn's going to uh, change the pinion seal at the front. Uh, we've got the axle tube seals on the sides here. That'll be a new adventure for him. And uh, we're going to change the rear gasket as well. And we'll just clean up the case on the inside. I'll pull this pin I put in there just temporarily. And we'll get another cotter pin for the vent tube. I put that in here yesterday just to keep water out of it. So, yeah, it's definitely looking better than it did uh, yesterday. Anyway, we'll uh, go to town and get these changed out and then we'll uh, figure out what we're going to do next. See if we can take out the thing first. With, uh... All right, going to remove the old seal. Ellen's going to use the screw trick to get this out. Was this cutworm that taught you to this? No, somebody in the comments said that they tried my trick with the screw, it didn't work, but they used the claw. Okay. Oh! That worm told me about the screw, yeah. to push it out with the screw. Uh -huh. But somebody else told me that I can do it out this way, actually. You just like hitting stuff with a hammer, I think. Yeah. I, hope, I hope we have a new one of those. Uh oh. It's, this one is wider, this one is narrower. Yeah, we have a couple of seals. So that's the seal that came out. It matches it matches pretty much this one, right? No, this oh, one. Matches that one. So I guess we'll go with that one. So that was boss part number 520090. Pinion oil seal. Put this one in for the next project. Okay, a new seal is in, and we're just putting the flange back on. And we have to figure out the torque value. We think it's around 100 foot pounds. 110. 110. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll torque that down to 110. I don't Fits. think we're gonna be able to with all the axles because it's gonna spin. Mm. But I have a adjustable adjustable torque wrench. Yeah. That how many how many ugga, how many ugga duggas is that? <laughs> like six. <laughs> One, five, six. About hundred and seven. 
actually we can pretty much tell where the nut was anyway because of the amount of threads we kind of took a quick look here at how much thread was protruding so i think we're pretty close there with the okay, six the ugga duggas that now we just got to line up the cotter pin split pin <laughs> Go. Okay, that was probably one of the hardest seals I've ever had to get out. What about you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember the mowing. Well, there's what it looks like. So uh, we managed to get it out in a couple pieces. It is probably original. This is leather. So it was a leather seal in there. So I'm sure that's been there for some time. Anyway, that was uh, not a lot of fun. We used a lot of different... Uh, tools to get it out everything from prying to trying the screw trick uh, some big hammers uh, we actually use a little rotary file uh, to sort of cut through the, uh, cut through the cage a little bit without being careful to go into the tube so that's looking good now we'll put the uh, the new seal in which looks a lot less substantial than the old seal Where's the other one? all right the new uh, seals are in the axle tubes that was a fun job okay. Um, and we got the back cover off and uh, Lynn's just giving a quick inspection and it doesn't look too bad, I guess, for a 60 year old yeah. differential. It's probably never had any work done to it. Doctor differential is mm -hmm. going to tell you now. Yeah. There's very little amount of play here. Well, I don't know. There is a little bit of play. And here on the crown, there's like barely any play which is very good has play but you want to go further and see about this no no <laughs> a little play but... i think it's good for another uh okay. fifty thousand k okay. anyway okay so uh back cover we're just going to re-gasket basically and uh stick that back on i've got some gl4 for at home that i'm going to bring so we can refill it so that's really all we're going to do on the back cover. I'm just going to use uh, two gaskets. I like using two gaskets on the rear cover, just in case. And then we'll put it back together, and then we'll uh, move on to another part of the project. You scratched my axle tubes. Oh, uh, I guess I'll have to touch it up. And now we can see the rust on the Yeah, so don't, don't show the rust. All right, we'll be back. All right, we are just about to slap the cover back on the, uh, the rear axle. Uh, I've got the gasket in place with the gasket maker. Uh, Elena's has cleaned the cover up wherever that is gone to uh, on the wire wheel uh, over here. So we're just going to put some gasket maker here and then we're going to button this up and be done with the rear axle and move on to somewhere else. All right, we're uh, finally getting to another fun job here. It's cooled down a little bit. It's just coming in after about five o'clock. So we are uh, removing the spring and the lever shock. So Elin's working on the rear shackle that and, take a while. and then he's going to be working on that spring eye bolt so cross your fingers pray for us everybody oh my i cannot believe that came up although although the pin might not come out but. next <laughs> see that's what penetrating oil does over the course of a week it was all my uh, all you're doing <laughs> The penetrating oil didn't help at all? Don't give credit to the oil. Give credit to okay, well, next you can remove the lever shock. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. All right, it's just coming up to uh, 6.30, and we're giving up because we're stuck. Right? Quite literally. We're literally stuck. So this spring came out okay, and Elian rejoiced, and... The celebrations were a little bit premature, let's just say. <laughs> the um, passenger side is stuck pretty solid. So we've stripped it pretty much of everything that we can. Uh, the bush at the rear or the shackle at the rear came off, but that spring eye at the front is holding tight. So we've sprayed it with some more penetrating oil and we're hoping that's going to do its magic overnight. I don't know if it'll do anything at all. When but we come tomorrow when it's going to be boom. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's going to fall off automatically overnight by itself. So we'll um, come back and we'll play with this a bit more tomorrow when we have more patience because our patience is running a little bit thin. Uh, lever shocks are off and pretty grimy. So we'll clean those up uh, along with the rest of the uh, bits, the shackles. I never did get around to doing 
a lot of the other parts today. Uh, I did get some of the parts cleaned up, but not all of them. So I uh, still have the uh, shackle plates and the u-bolts and the bump stop brackets to do tomorrow so anyway we got this side painted i don't know if you noticed as i was going by but that looks pretty good so frames cleaned and painted on this side and the wheel tub has been freshly undercoated i mean just for comparison purposes there's that side versus the unfinished side i mean we did the wheel well on this side but just have a look at the uh have a look at the difference in the frame so basically just wire wheeling that to frame to get all the rust off of it and uh, you can see a little bit of remnants of the old bump stop uh, there the rubber bump stop we'll get that of that as well and we'll give that a fresh coat of paint tomorrow so we're going to call it a night out here but uh, i think we'll be able to get back out here tomorrow and carry on that's the plan anyway so uh, we'll fight with that uh, that spring tomorrow after ellen fights with rusty all right have a good night Good night. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. All right, Saturday morning, July the 8th, just coming up to uh, 10 a.m. It's a beautiful day outside, and we've got our parts sunning themselves here on the table. We're just about to start the process of uh, de-rusting these, so we've got the wire wheel uh, bench grinder set up, and we're going to try to do most of them on the, uh, the wire wheel inside the shop. We've got the shop emptied, uh, the TR6 outside here, safely away from where we're going to be doing the wire brushing. Some of the stuff we got a head start on yesterday, like the brake back plates and the emergency brake uh, levers here. But uh, a lot of the other stuff is uh, looking a little worse for wear, like these lever shocks. So anyway, we'll probably spend most of the morning uh, refinishing or getting these down to uh, to bare metal uh, before we get them in a, coast, a coat of paint. Unfortunately, the uh, spring did not fall off the uh, hanger by itself overnight, even though we soaked it with penetrating oil. So we'll, uh, I'm sure, fight with that a little bit more today at some point in order to get that off the car. Anyway, no time like the present. Let's get crack a lacking. All right, 12 noon, and we've just been sort of working away out here, uh, cleaning the parts up. They're looking uh, better. Hope you can see that. Uh, Alin got the spring off the passenger side with some heat uh, to melt the rubber in the, uh, the bushing or the silent block or whatever they call that. So we're now um, pushing the bushings out of the spring eyes over here. I'm gonna push this guy out. And um, I'm probably gonna try to clean the springs up a little bit with a wire brush. Probably give them a quick paint, although it probably won't stay much. And then we're gonna oil them, I think, with some old uh, motor oil. I think the manual calls for them to be oiled between the leaves with old motor oil. So we'll probably end up brushing these with oil anyway which will probably end up destroying the paint. But uh, anyway, things are looking good. We're getting pretty close to getting these into paint. We'll um, basically wash them with uh, soap and water, and then we'll hang them in the, uh, the tent and give them a uh, couple coats of paint. We'll probably work on the uh, lever shocks. We're going to split the, uh, the links, and we're going to pop the tops off. I did bring some fork oil, so we're probably going to exchange the oil in these shocks. I'm sure, it's probably the original oil. Um, so we'll have a look at those probably before they go into paint. So we'll hang up what we can paint and we'll, we'll bring you back and probably show you the shocks. All right, just taking the, uh, the drop links off the lever shock. Actually, that wasn't too bad. Usually they, they pop pretty good <laughs> sometimes. So. so that came off pretty easy. So good, we'll do the other one and then I'll uh, pop the tops off, have a look and change the oil. All right, we've got the uh, shock and the vise just sitting upright, and we've got the top off. And uh, there's the little uh, valve, operating valve inside, so basically two pistons on either side in these chambers. As you can see, it's quite low on oil. This should be topped pretty much to the uh, top of this reservoir, and uh, this is definitely not. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, empty the old oil out. We're going to go grab my new oil, and I'll bring you back when we uh, get her filled back up. So. To empty the oil out, just basically turn it upside down, pump the arm a few times. That will basically uh, clean most of the oil out. I do actually have a video on my channel. Maybe I'll post a link up in the corner if you're interested in uh, doing a little bit more than just uh, changing the oil out in these shocks. Uh, generally, you can clean them out as well as you just uh, give them a quick shot of mineral oil, rinse that through, blow them out. So 
Anyway, we're just going to empty the oil out and then we'll fill this with new oil and put the top back on. The gasket actually looks pretty good, which I'm surprised about. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to get this some nice clean oil. All right, sorry for the fan noise, if you can hear it in the background, but it's hot in the garage. Anyway, we've got a choice of a fork oil. We've got the Bellray uh, 30W, uh, which I use in my TR6, but I think we're gonna go with the um, Harley Davidson Screaming Eagle Performance Fork Oil, which I believe, if I look it up on the net, it looks like it's about 20W. So I think we wanna go, I think the uh, factory Triumph was somewhere around 20W, if I'm not mistaken. So. I think the 30W is a little bit too heavy for this application. So we're just going to, uh, doesn't take a lot of oil, but all we do is, uh, like I mentioned, we drain the old oil out. There wasn't much in there, but all you do is to basically, as you pour it in, just work the, the lever arm up and down to get the air out. And then we're just gonna fill it till it's full. We'll add a tiny bit more and then we'll the cover back on and call this one good. It's operating or feels it feels as it should. Nice and smooth. You can see the oil drop a little bit as you operate. Get the air pockets out. Who knows this could be the original oil in this shock, or could have been the original oil. All right. There is a little uh, fill port here on the side if you don't want to take it off the car. So you can actually uh, unscrew this as, and use this to fill if need be. So that basically that screw there is the level of what the oil should be. All right, that's looking good. We'll put the cap back on, call this one done, do the other one. All right, uh, parts have been painted with one coat and uh, I've got some in the tent, some out here, some I've got painted black, some I have paint with, painted with a Eastwood cast iron gray. Some I have painted with silver or aluminum, bright aluminum. So getting to be a bit of a Picasso out here with the parts. Alin is over there on the press trying to fix the spring as uh, the one spring is missing one of the clips uh, to hold the leaves together. So he's trying to fix that. So he's got the spring over there compressed with the uh, press. And now he's going to try to fix the clip. So Springs are giving them all sorts of issues today. Well, Lynn and I were just talking a couple of minutes ago too, that we may be at the point where we don't have to take anything off the car. Yeah. Except the, the only thing I thought about was the gas tank possibly. Yeah. yeah. But I think we've removed everything off the car that we need to remove, which is a good thing. So obviously things are now, you know, in the put back on kind of phase. Yeah. But at least we're at the point, I think, we don't have to take stuff off. Well, we hope we don't have to take stuff off. But <laughs> we'll wait and see. Well, how, when are we taking the body off? Oh, yeah. Tomorrow, I think? <laughs> Sunday tomorrow, right? Yeah. yeah, we should be able to take that off tomorrow. No, thanks. <laughs> I'm trying to get motivated over here to do a very dirty job. <laughs> so I want to clean up under the car before the axle goes back in. So going to be laying on my back, scrubbing the bottom of the body tub of all the old undercoating and grime. So laying on my back, I did bring my face shield, so at least I won't get be getting stuff in my face. But we'll be under there wire brushing for a while, I'm sure. And we're going to recoat the inner frame rails and the uh, bottom of the tub with the rubberized uh, coating. So. Just working up the uh, energy to get under there and 
start wire brushing. Hi. Hi. How come I'm doing this? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, shouldn't the skinny guy be under here? I don't know. The chef told me to put the bushings on the spring. So I that's think the what I'm skinny doing. guy is going to do up here. Is he? That guy's going to do here and here. I'll tell him. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is not going to be fun. Good luck. What are we doing? Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that supposed to be a rust duration? Yeah. Not paint duration? Yeah. Okay. It actually doesn't look too bad under there. So it'll look uh, even better once we get it uh, undercoated back under there. And the inside and bottom of the frame rails painted. So it'll look pretty good up till the uh, X spot. And then uh, we'll have to do a little bit of work going forward. Just that middle section. We've got the front section done where we did the front suspension and we just need to do the middle part afterwards. So making our way there. Uh, the plan is maybe to try to get the axle back in today. Maybe not all the components of the axle, but uh, I still need to uh, wire brush the springs here. I think we're just going to wire brush these and oil these. That's it. Uh, I got some other components out here painted. Lever shocks ready to go. Rest of the stuff is in the uh, in the shed drying, so to be able to handle that shortly. All right, just coming up to what is it, 450, and uh, so what we're doing with the springs is we've just wire brushed them down so they look better than they did. Now we've got some uh, used engine oil over here in a brush, and we're just going to brush them with oil, and that's all we're going to be doing for the uh, the rear springs. If you look in the workshop manual, it actually tells you to brush them with oil used oil to keep them lubricated and uh, the leaves sliding so we're going to do that um, the outside uh, or the back of the car looks really good uh, Lynn's going to take you under the car for a little tour in a little bit before it gets too dark just so you can see what it looks like underneath and it looks pretty good I think we're going to need a new fuel line and we're taking a look at that when we're under there so that will probably have to be exchanged at some point but that's another story Anyway, let me paint these things and then we'll get ready to get them back on the car and maybe just get the axle sitting loosely on top of them and that'll probably be it for today. All right, so this is what we've done under the car. Cleaned up everywhere and painted. David painted everything, looks great actually. It was pretty clean. There was grease all over the place, but no rust. You could see the paint before. There was still red paint. So the frame and everything, only the middle of the car is not done yet, but that's gonna be done when we have it on four jack stands for the clear coat or at some point, we're gonna finish the center of the car and that's it. Looks great. All right, just coming up to 5.30ish, I guess, somewhere around there. Yeah. Anyway, we did pretty well today, and we were just getting to the point of installing the rear spring, and it decided that it wanted to rain out. So <laughs> we had to push the car back in and cover the car up, So, and uh, basically put away whatever we had outside, so we did a bit of a scramble to do that. So anyway, like I said, we made pretty good progress today. We got a lot of work done, and uh, it's too bad we couldn't have got the axle just sitting on the springs, but that'll have to wait for another day. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow or the next day. All right, welcome back to the uh, Rusty Beauty Shop. It's now Monday. Uh, we were rudely interrupted by the rain on Saturday, and yesterday we took the day off. Well, we didn't take the day off. We took the day off from the cars. We both cut our grass <laughs> and did other stuff, so got caught up on the, the home stuff. So now we're back uh, playing with the uh, 62 Triumph TR4. And the first thing I thought I would jump on is the brake back plates. Uh, we painted these a couple days ago, so they're fairly dry. They're still a little sticky. I can see it's you know, sticking in my paper towel a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and rebuild the brake back plates. We've got basically all new, uh, new hardware, a new fitting kit here. We've cleaned up our old wheel cylinders and our brake adjuster. So we're just going to go ahead and install those now. Um, I don't think I'm going to take a close-up video of this, maybe just a little time-lapse video, because I know Alain for, for a fact has this on his channel on how to install the wheel fitting kit, uh, or the wheel cylinder fitting kit. So we're using Moss part number 582225, 
And that's basically this little kit here that gives you the locking plates. And these little plates here and the little rubber boot for the uh, wheel cylinder locks it down. It also comes with a little bit of uh, brake grease, which is good. Although I have another little tube of brake grease that I just happen to have. So we've got to make sure that that uh, wheel cylinder slides in its uh, little space there. It's got to be able to slide back and forth. So we want to do a little grease on that area. So anyway, without uh, further ado, what are we going to do? Let's get crack a -locking. Let's get crack a -locking. Okay, uh, making progress. Alina has successfully got the uh, the driver's side spring in, so new dewasher, new castle nut, and uh, split pin. Got the new bushings at the rear on the shackle. Probably can't see it, but way back there. So those are looking good. On the inside of the garage, I've been kind of working on getting the next stuff together. Um, so I uh, showed you we got the brake back plates done. Unfortunately, they can't go on the axle until the axle's in. Then we started getting together all the uh, hardware and cleaning it up. So this is for the brake compensator. This is for the, um, the rear axles. This is for the uh, rear uh, shocks, lever shocks. This is for the uh, drive shaft. And we've got a couple new U-joints here. We're going to check to see what the U-joints look like in the, U uh, in the um, drive shaft currently and replace them if required. Uh, castle nuts, we got new. Those are going on now. A few other little bits over here. The springs, unfortunately, I'm going to have to reuse because the uh, springs from Moss were back ordered. I do have a new fitting kit for the uh, the brakes over here, or the new uh, retainers. So I got new screws for the rear drums, and I've got new rear drums. There's the part number for the rear screws, Moss part number. We've got the uh, brake shoe retainer kit. Again, there's the Moss number for that. We got new links for the uh, shocks. We got new buffers for the axle. We cleaned up the uh, three-way uh, for the brake union on the top of the axle. We've got U-bolts with new uh, grade eight hardware. We've got the tab washers for the axle retaining bolts. We've cleaned up our uh, little spring plate uh, bottoms here, painted those with Eastwood uh, spray gray, which is sort of a cast iron look. Got the compensator cleaned up. Uh, there's the uh, spring uh, link rear shock number if you want it from Moss. There it is. And here is the rear axle buffer number if you want it as well. So everything's kind of ready to go. Just need to get the other spring in and then we'll continue on. All right, we got the uh, compensator for the uh, emergency brake and the cables put back on and the union for the brake lines to run across the back here. We've got our shocks uh standing by i think on the previous video segments he saw me uh top these off with fresh uh um, fork oil so they're ready to go um elin has got the uh, driver's side spring on i think we showed you i've just wiped it down quickly it's only been coated with oil not painted actually came up pretty well a little less rusty than it was and he's just working on the rear shackle here on the passenger side so it's a little warm out here. So getting close and then we're going to put the shocks on next before we put the axle in just to get those out of the way and to give us a bit more clearance while we have it. So making progress. So shocks next. All right, we've got the axle back in uh, just in place. Uh, now we're trying to attach the uh, spring to the axle and attach the axle plate. So, and we also have the buffers here ready to go. So there's all the hardware required. And we're just gonna use some zip ties to fasten the buffers. So looking good. Didn't scratch it too badly getting it back in. So far anyway. All right, I don't know if I've updated or not, but the axle's in. And uh, we're just about to install the actual axles themselves. So alin has got the uh, spacers I'll and the like back that. plate no up up let me see keep maybe around there somewhere maybe up no i think it is no backwards no nope. like that i'm gonna give you the other back plate 
No, that's definitely wrong. I'll tell you in a minute. I know the adjuster is on top of this. I, <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. Okay, the uh, axles are in and cinched down. We haven't done the uh, tabs on the locking plates yet. No brakes yet, but uh, we're trying to just get the car moving so we can actually get it in the garage and work on it there. It's a little bit uh, hot out. So um, new brake drums. Uh, we got the new uh, screws. These are 582410. You want to put the screws in just to keep them in there? Oh, come on. Okay, never mind. So we're using Moss Classic Gold drums 586010 on the project. So, all right, so that's looking good. Looking nice and clean back there. Hey, it's a rusty beauty. Yeah. All right, uh, things are still looking good. We've got the bump stops installed now and the bump stop brackets, I guess you can call them. Uh, we've got the e-brake cables installed. So those are looking good. Um, we're just about to do the actual brake shoes themselves. So we have a new fitting kit. As mentioned, we're gonna be using the old springs, which drives me crazy, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> so we're gonna get those on now and obviously put our new drums on with our uh, new retainers and then we'll move around to the other side. So. We still haven't um, torqued down our lever shocks yet because we think we might have a leak on the um, passenger side. It might be leaking through the seal, so we're going to keep an eye on that before we actually torque it down and set the taper, uh, just in case we have to take it off. So, all right, let's get these bra uh, brakes, brake shoes in place. All right, the brake shoes are now in place with their little uh, pins holding them in place. We have greased the uh, adjuster, so. Uh, once we put the drum on, we'll get them adjusted properly. So that's looking good. So on with the, uh, the new drums and we'll get our new screws and call this side done and move on to the other side. All right. All right, after dinner and we're picking it up and Elaine is under the car. We've got our uh, stainless steel brake lines here for the rear, our stainless steel brake line for the rear, the other two are for the front. So he's just uh, putting that on the three-way union at the back. And then we're gonna go for the hard lines. So we've got the old lines here we're gonna be using as templates. And we have a uh, nickel copper, nickel copper, cupro, I guess you can call it, copper nickel brake pipe set uh, from Automech. And uh, again, this was purchased from Moss. I'm not sure what the, the Moss part number is for this. Oh, here it is over here. So here's the Moss part number. See that 588658. So uh, these are easily bendable by hand. It does come with a uh, location um, number uh, graphic here. So we'll just kind of follow that along and they're actually numbered here on the lines themselves. So it should be able to figure it out. All right. All right, while Lynn's working on the uh, rear brake lines, I'm working on the uh, drive shaft. And we took a look at the uh, U-joints and they actually look to be in very good shape. So we're just gonna leave those. Uh, the uh, sliding joint though was totally seized up. So I've managed to get it freed up. And uh, we're just sort of cleaning up the old grease out of it. We'll re-grease it and uh, get it sliding a little bit better before we put it back in the car. I'm gonna probably just wire brush this really quickly. I'm gonna resist the urge to paint it uh, unbelievably, but so be it. We're gonna have a rusty drive shaft. Wow, look at this beautiful rear end. Not that one, the one on the car. Huh? Doesn't it look great? So we have the brake lines, the e brake cables installed, we have the brake lines installed here, and the flex holes here up to here so this we're gonna continue tomorrow the drive shaft is installed told david to paint it like a barber pole he didn't want to i don't know why i don't know what a barber pole is <laughs> <laughs> oh you think about the other type of poles oh. anyway the brake here the brakes are assembled everything the springs looks great here so the only thing we need to do is the lock tabs for the top yeah we bent hold on i can't move there so we bent these on the bottom but now we're gonna go and bend the ones on top and then the only thing other thing we have to worry about is the spring uh the lever shock attachments 
Because we're trying yeah, to figure out whether to... that one leaks or not over there. This one seems to be dry. Yeah. So. All right. All right, just coming up to uh, 20 to 9, and the rear axle is back together. Uh, brake suspension looking good back there. Uh, Lynn took you for a little tour underneath, and it's uh, looking pretty good. I think you'll agree. Obviously, the front end is looking pretty good. Uh, so I think what we're going to do tomorrow, uh, we just had a little bit of a discussion. We're going to finish the brake lines tomorrow, and then I think we're going to jump on the uh, transmission. We've got the parts in required that we needed to hopefully fix it. So we'll da drag that from underneath the table tomorrow and we'll put it on the test stand. And if it works, we'll probably get it in within the next couple of days. So we're getting, uh, we're getting pretty close. Um, still obviously quite a bit to do, but we're getting there. Um, we were trying to figure out how long we'd been working on this uh, today. I don't know when the first video was, but it hasn't been that long. So we've done quite a bit of work in a short period of time. Anyway, we're going to put it away for the night. We're just about to push it out side and back into the barn so we can bring the red TR6 indoors overnight. So we will see you back out here tomorrow. So thanks as always for watching, for commenting, and for subscribing. We'll see you tomorrow.